All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another episode of the Armchair Arm Dragger Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Ben Hersick. And, man, do I do I want to start talking about the whole thing that happened in Saudi Arabia with WWE? I'll, we'll get to that, and I'll explain the actual title of this podcast for a minute. Well, in, in a little bit. But first, as we always start these episodes, you can follow myself on Twitter at Churro Soldier. You can follow this podcast, the Podcast Armchair. Follow All Things Combat on Twitter, which is a website that I write for. I cover professional wrestling, boxing, and MMA on Twitter at Things Combat. And you can follow The Cauldron at CSU on Twitter at CSU Cauldron, where I'm the sports editor at. We've got stuff coming out this week. Yes, that's how that works. So this week we will have new articles and all that, which will be a lot of fun. Yay. Um, so, that's the intro. Oh, also the All Things Combat merch shop. I'll blow that more at the end. So, let's let's talk about every single wrestling fan in the world being disappointed. Let's talk about Saudi Arabia, specifically two matches. One was Brock Lesnar and Ricochet, and the other, as most people probably know, is Goldberg and Bray Wyatt. This proved a very, very big issue that WWE has right now. This is something that I've kind of been thinking this for a while and like watching the weekly shows. It's just kind of like you know what is kind of coming with this. Like you can kind of see that this is a situation they're in. The WWE doesn't know how to make new stars anymore they tried with a couple people they tried with nakamura they failed they tried with let's see who who won the rumble after nakamura that was not rollins year was that rollins year no that was rollins year they tried with rollins rollins did himself in and now they're trying again with mcintyre the problem is that's only one person per year and they have so much talent the WWE roster, you look at it from top to bottom, it might be the most talented wrestling company in the world, bar none. New Japan's got great talent. AEW's got great talent. NWA has great talent. WWE has the best of the best. That's been the, this case for a long time. It's not just the whole, I'm with I'm against the AEW thing, because I'm, I'm, not, I'm not against the AEW. But... This is a big thing that people need to think about. WWE, you have the best wrestlers in the world. You have wrestlers people talk about on a week-to-week, a day-to-day basis, essentially. And you look at it, well, yes, for every Roman Reigns, you're going to have a No Way Jose. For every Seth Rollins, you have to have an Elias. But the star-making potential is there for so many people. It's such an important thing to have. You can't sell wrestling tickets without having that star attraction. And WWE could easily work with people to make them stars. There, there are so many factors into this situation. with Whether it's lack of TV time, whether it's the amount of pay-per-views they have and having to get everybody on a card somewhere, or if it's the fact that they just don't have the way to fit everybody into a show. But I look at it, there's there's three three big examples I want to talk about in the fact that they had this next star they had this next star on their doorstep, ready for greatness, and then just Vin, Vince reportedly gave up on them. And the, the three biggest examples are Cedric Alexander, Umberto Carrillo, and Ricochet. Here's three guys. One of them's a former United States champion. Two of them have had multiple United States championship matches. Cedric Alexander proved he is one of the best wrestlers when he had that long reign as Cruiserweight champion on 205 Live. You have talented wrestlers. You have somebody like Cedric Alexander who used that talent, made himself known, and now he's on the, the biggest stage possible and there's nothing for him. You're telling me there's nothing for, I believe, still the longest reigning cruiserweight champion in WWE since since the relaunch of the cruiserweight brand, or championship, excuse me. So, 
now you look at it, he had the five minute match on the pre show against AJ Styles at some pay per view or another last year. And then he lost in the rematch where he looked great, and we haven't seen him since. Look at Humberto Carrillo. He's had shot after shot at the United States Championship with Andrade before Andrade's suspension. And then he's looked horrible in this feud with Angel Garza. So that's not great. Ricochet actually won the United States Championship for a brief period of time. He was United States Champion. Then he lost it to AJ, and he hasn't been able to rebound since. Yes, he had the match with Lesnar in Saudi Arabia, but that was a minute and a half of him just getting tossed around. The WWE has this talent. They have some of the best wrestlers possible. And yet they can't find a way to make things work for them. They can't make people be these big stars they used to be. Which is why we have to see Brock Lesnar come back and be a part-time champion. Which is why we have Goldberg come back and be a part-time champion. And the problem is they can do it. Look at The Fiend's run from SummerSlam this year to... From SummerSlam last year in 2019 to Saudi Arabia in 2020. You had the best character in pro wrestling going for you. You had somebody that has been a consistently great character wrestler, and he's really good in the ring too, but a consistently great character wrestler, and you just drop the ball like you did. You, He built himself back up from being what he was. He built himself back up from being nothing. He goes to, he goes to become this, this new figure that everybody loves and everybody's enjoying seeing wrestle. And it's such a... It's such an interesting thing, and he looks so good. What does WWE do? They put the title on him. Here's why that's an issue. The Fiend is a wrestler and a character that never really needs a title. It's almost like The Undertaker was. The Undertaker never needed a title run. But he got them every once in a while here and there. With the fiend being a world title champ, a world champion, he at some point has to lose that title. If the fiend's thing had been him just going around and righting all the wrongs of Bray Wyatt's past, essentially beating everybody who had beaten him before, then that could have worked. That could have worked, and we could have been fine. But they put the biggest title they could find, and that they that was available for him on him. And now he has to lose at some point. You have a star in the making, yes, and you've made him a star. He, he had a decent Universal Championship run. But you have this star in the making, and he's made it himself. And you just destroy that with one match in Saudi Arabia. They destroyed everything with that. He could have been a star. This could have been something. And I don't know if it's because of the lack of characters in wrestling anymore, if it's the lack of WWE not knowing what they're doing. And I, I am going to blame Vince McMahon because he seems like the right person to blame since he's the one in charge. I I looked at the entire WWE roster, Raw, SmackDown, NXT, NXT UK, 205 Live, and the women's divisions included. I have a list of wrestlers who are great in the ring who are really, really good in the ring. For the most part. There's a couple on here where you scratch your head, you're like, why are they on here? But they, the, the reason that WWE can't get behind them and the reason WWE isn't into them is because they're not, they don't have a character yet. That, that's my first theory. The first theory why WWE can't make stars anymore is that they aren't, these wrestlers who are great wrestlers aren't, able to make a character out of this. From Raw, you have the likes of Akira Tozawa, Cedric Alexander, EC3, Eric Young, Umberto Carrillo, Mojo Rawley, Ricochet, Riddick Moss, Shelton Benjamin, Curtis Axel, Zack Ryder, Billy Kay, Natalia, Peyton Royce, and Sarah Logan. Fifteen wrestlers there. Raw is a three-hour show. We're, we've got to fit as much in as possible, yes. That is true already. But you have this talent. You have these Really, really good wrestlers. Like, think about how great Akira Tozawa was on 205 Live. Think about the great matches Cedric Alexander had as Cruiserweight Champion. EC3 over in TNA and NXT, too. 
look at what Humberto Carrillo's done. Look at Ricochet. But why should the fans care? Why should the fans care that they're just great wrestlers? There's no reason for these fans to invest. There's no reason for them to actually care about these guys. They would rather care about people from the past. Whenever you hear Brock Lesnar's music hit, or whenever you hear Goldberg's music hit, listen to the crowd reaction. They still get a reaction. And for the most part, it's a pretty good reaction. They get pretty good reactions still. That could be the issue. You're giving these guys the reaction when they're part-timers and not willing to... And they only show up a couple times a year. And yes, it's WrestleMania and Saudi Arabia is a big payday and all that, but you still look at it. This is the issue where if you're not a character that people want to invest their time in and care about, they're not going to care. And that's just Raw. Raw, you have three guys who were in championship feuds. And you have guys who are still really good in the ring. Shelton Benjamin's still amazing in the ring. But fans just don't care because they're not wrestlers. They're just wrestlers. There's no character there. Shelton had a thing for a couple weeks on SmackDown where he just, like, moved his eyes around and was, like, looking shady. But that was it. And SmackDown, it gets worse. You have Apollo Crews, Bo Dallas, Cesaro, Curtis Axel, Drew Gulak, Grand Metal League, Heath Slater, Kalisto, Lince Dorado, Mustafa Ali, Shinsuke Nakamura, Chad Gable, Alexa Bliss, Carmella, Dana Brooke, Nikki Cross, and Tamina. That's 22. There are 22 wrestlers on SmackDown who are good, in the, are good to great in the ring. They're in that huge wide area category of good to great. There's no reason to be invested in them, though. Why should I be invested in Shinsuke Nakamura? He's a former former one-time Intercontinental Champion, a two-time U.S. Champion. Why should I care? What is there for me to care about with Shinsuke Nakamura? Apollo Crews, I've sung his praise so much on these podcasts and the people who will listen to me about pro wrestling. Why should we care? Where is there to care about Apollo Crews? And you look at it, these guys don't really have character or they don't have enough enough TV time to show the world those characters. It's the fact that you have to have a way for fans to see these characters, the fans to see these new stars in action. Because if they don't see these new stars, and all they see are people from the past and people who aren't full-time active wrestlers anymore, they're not going to care. They have no reason to care about these new faces. They're giving fans a reason to care about Drew McIntyre. They're giving fans a reason to care about Roman Reigns. Seth Rollins, Kevin Owens, Randy Orton, Edge. You're giving people reasons to care about these guys. But you're not giving fans a reason to care about these guys who are there day in and day out, working 24-7 in that ring to get better. Why is this not working? Why are you trying to sell based off of nostalgia? And this is where I like AEW's business model. Look at AEW. They know fans like the Bucks. They know fans like Kenny. They know fans like Cody. But if you had told people before AEW started, Sammy Guevara is going to be in the biggest heel stable in AEW and is going to be a prominent member of the roster, and they're going to make Dustin Rhodes an actual person from, who still wrestles from the Attitude Era, who people liked, but he was never the number one guy. They're going to take Dustin Rhodes and put him into high-profile feuds where he looks amazing, and you're going to take guys like Hangman Page, and even though the Bucks use it as a dish, as a diss, excuse me, he was a jobber in Ring of Honor until he joined Bullet Club, and make people care about him. That's doing it right. You are making people care about wrestlers they should never have cared about in the first place. You have to make people invest into wrestlers. You can't just have people show up, wrestle, and lose. Yes, somebody has to lose a match, but you can't just have somebody show up just to show up. Show up, put on a good performance, 
and show some character work. Sh show something like that. Another reason, another theory why I don't think WWE can make big stars anymore is the fact that nostalgia does sell. You look at the ratings from certain segments, and I, I try to understand it as best as I can. I'm not a real numbers guy when it comes to ratings. I don't really understand how, it, how you get these ratings. But Goldberg and uh, Bray Wyatt having a face-off, the, uh, the video conference, telephone, via satellite, whatever the hell it was, thing from a few weeks ago, you have the biggest SmackDown rating since the move to Fox. And tonight, they have John Cena and Bill Goldberg advertised for the show. Cena will be there for sure. So, fans, even like last fans who only watch for like the big names, are going to come back for that. And that's been WWE's business model ever since, ever since like 2013, 2014. You just see legends keep popping back up and over and over and over and over and over. It's so... So weird and so, so confusing. You look at show other companies, like, look at AEW. And I, I look at that, and they are always winning the 18 to 49 demographic, which is the more important graphic. It's because they're showing these characters and wrestlers that we might not know before AEW started. I could tell you I knew the name Chris Statlander. I couldn't tell you that she was going to be one of my favorite women's wrestlers in 2020. I could tell you I knew the name uh, Hikaru Shida, but I didn't know she would become as popular as she has. So I look at it. If your rival company, which is beating you weekly on a weekly basis, is able to make people invest and care about new wrestlers, why are you not doing the exact same? If it's working for them, it can work for you. Just don't do a blatant copy-paste. Don't make, you know... Who's like a big guy I have on this list? I don't really have any big guests. Riddick Moss. Don't make Riddick Moss the next Jake Hager where he's just emotionless and just... weird-looking, creepy face all the time. It's... It's an annoying thing because there's so much star power. There's so much potential... On this roster for WWE, they just don't invest in it. You have to invest in these. That's kind of what every single theory you throw out there. I know I've only thrown out two. There's probably like six or seven more that I can't think of right now. But you throw all these theories out there. They're all tied back to the same thing. Invest in the talent that you have already. Don't rely on people from your past. When you have as long as a storied and history past that WWE has... You can invest in people from the past still, but let those people from the past put over guys from the future. You could have easily had Goldberg face somebody else at WrestleMania besides Roman Reigns, or if you had to face Roman, it didn't have to be for the title. You could have done Cena Fiend for the title and have Cena lose to the Fiend clean, and then you make the Fiend a huge star. And you don't have to take your hottest act at the moment and put a title on them. You don't have to do that because then your hottest act at the moment has to lose. They have to lose at some point. It's it's a very hard line to walk, but you can make these stars and you can make people invest in these stars. Give them time. Give the wrestlers that you have time. And you think about it, look at the, the WWE developmental system. I'm talking NXT, NXT UK, and 205 Live. You have a whole bunch of wrestlers there who at some point could show up on the main roster. I have a list here, and this is a list I never thought I'd have to make, of NXT stars I'm worried about when they get the call up to the main roster. I have a list of 64 wrestlers who I would rather see stay in NXT and NXT UK and on 205 Live instead of showing up on Raw or SmackDown at some point. And it's not just the big guy, the big names too. I do have like Adam Cole, Tommaso Ciampa, Johnny Gargano, Rhea Ripley, Bianca Belair. I have those names on this list. It's also names like Bronson Reed, Austin Theory, Isaiah Swerve Scott, James Drake, Joaquin Wild, 
Leo Rush, Io Shirai, Mercedes Martinez, Isla Dawn, Zaya Brookside, Tony Nice, Brian Kendrick. These are people who you know are great and know can wrestle and know are some of the best. But I get I am nervous if they ever make the jump to Raw or SmackDown. Because they're gonna get overshadowed by some other part-timer who's coming back just for a paycheck and to show that they can still wrestle when half the time they can't. Sorry, Goldberg, not sorry. Sorry, Taker, not sorry. It's just that their their time is past and the stars of today don't get that time that they need to show you that they can be those next big stars, those next main eventers, those next Hall of Famers. You have this talent. Don't just let it sit there and rot. Use it. You have all these wrestlers who can be the future of your company. Let them be that future. It's that simple. That's it for this week. It's a short one. It's something I just kind of wanted to put out there, especially after the whole Saudi Arabia, Goldberg, beating Fiend in three minutes deal. It's it's essentially like not everything put together like in a cohesive one thought, but it's it's everything that I could really think of and have a way to word it. Thank you guys so much for listening. I'm trying to keep these short, and this is a pretty short one for me to do. Uh... You can follow myself on Twitter at Truer Soldier. You can follow this podcast at podcast, excuse me, podcast armchair. You can follow all things combat on Twitter at things combat, which is a website that I write for where we cover professional wrestling, boxing, and MMA. You can also visit our merch store, which will be linked in the description below. We have shirts, hoodies, hats. Uh, I don't know why I looked over at my dresser and saw shampoo and was going to say we have shampoo. Uh, disclaimer, all things combat does not sell shampoo. Uh, we have mugs, we have ther- uh, thermoses maybe? I don't remember. I know we have coasters, we have mouse pads. We got a lot of stuff. Go check it out. Go buy stuff. Uh, and you can also follow the Cauldron at Cleveland State on Twitter at CSU Cauldron, where we have articles go up every two weeks. This week coming up, we do have stuff being posted online, which is cool. I will try to get better at tweeting about that. I am off on Wednesday from everything. No work, no school, no nothing. So I am going to take the time to actually use that day to do some personal work and get articles posted on my social medias. Thank you guys so much for listening. I'll be back next week with what I wanted to do this week. But I didn't have... I I had the time, but this seemed more important to do. I'll leave it as like that. It does involve NXT, I will say that much. And you'll see it in the headline, title, whatever you want to call it next week. If you like what you heard here today, leave a like. If you really liked, hit subscribe. Let me know what you think about this episode. Good, bad, ugly, whatever you want to say. Go right ahead. Uh, Thank you guys so much for listening, and see you next week.